the homesteaders knew from day one when they signed uh, up that they, they would uh, pay for their farms. Um, everybody sort of thinks it's like the old west. You go to go sit down there, get 40 acres and a, and a mule, and that certainly is not the way it was. The people came with the intention of buying. That was uh, an incentive for them signing up because uh, most of the homesteaders, if they thought it was a giveaway, would never have, have applied. I know my, my mom and dad would not have. It was hard times. My dad was uh, cutting uh, cross ties for the railroad. He was making 50 cents a day for every day's work that he could get, which wasn't a regular uh, paycheck for him. Um, they lived in the county with my grandmother, and he heard that the men who applied for uh, the homesteads and were chosen would be um, paid 50 cents an hour, and one-third of that uh, they would get in cash, and two-thirds that they would get as credit hours on their farm. Dad had uh, some questions. Of, um, that was, a, they would be moving uh, 15 or 20 miles. How did the process of the interviewing with the government and the, you know, getting chosen, they were among the first 25. I suppose it came out in the newspaper first, but, you know, in those times, uh, everybody knew their neighbors, and when something as uh, exciting as they're going to be work, um, the neighbors told other neighbors, and they told it in churches, and and um, they just, everybody wanted to know about it, and um, they also had field workers coming out from the government who were being trained to take applications, and they were people of the community who knew the people that they would be taking applications from. And uh, they, they were required to go into Crossville, uh, the little office building that has been remodeled there right beside of the Palace Theater was the first office building of the Cumberland Homesteads. And they had to go in there and make written application. Now, lots of them could not write, um, so they had to to have somebody to help them with their application. Um, and then there was a committee that uh, looked over the applications and selected the ones that were the most probable. Those uh, applications were given then to one of the field workers. And um, those field workers who knew either them personally or knew of them uh, investigated them, and I understand that they were investigated for up to three months as to uh, whether they were good citizens of the community, whether they had good uh, work ethics, whether they were just uh, good families, um, and they, they had to be willing to work, and they had to really want to improve their life. And this was an amazing opportunity for them. And it was such an amazing uh, opportunity that the word surely got around because they had over 2,000 applications in two weeks' time. And that means they came to Crossville to make those applications. It's incredible. Um, my dad was thrilled to know that he could learn a building trade and that definitely was part of the promise that um, the men could learn a new building trade, whether it was carpentry or stone masonry or uh, plumbing or electrician. Um, and some of them learned uh, blacksmithing and lots of other um, things that they could use for the rest of their life. Uh, my dad was able to use his carpenter training for the rest of his life. 
What about the stonemasons? Did they have uh, professional masons come in and train some of the uh, workers? Um, another difference in old-fashioned homesteading and this homesteading was that old-fashioned homesteading, the people build their own houses. Uh, here on the homesteads, they were put on crews to work on a house and, and they may never have even worked on their own house. Um, and they had an experienced um, supervisor for each one of those uh, crews. Uh, there were men who came, and women too, uh, and taught things here on the homesteads um, that were professionals. But I, I'm just not really sure about the stonemasonry. Okay. I think that it gave 250 families hope for a better life and certainly peace of mind, at least during the building period. Um, they had work. They knew they were working together. They had friends where some of them had, had come out of the mining uh, communities where they were close, but um, they didn't have the feeling that they were working for much other than the mine owner. Um, but here they they thought they were um, on top of the world. So when I look at the pictures that the government sponsored during the Great Depression period where they had um, professional photographers go out into the byways of America and take photographs of the hardships that families were enduring during those times and it's um, very emotional um, as far as how desperate the families were. And when I look at the photographs of the particularly the children here during the same time period I don't see that desperation and lack of hope in their eyes and the just dullness in their eyes. The first school pictures that were taken at the temporary school still have a little bit of that, but certainly um, by the time the stone school was built and the, the photographs are taken there, there is definitely uh, an eagerness in the face of the kids. As a child, did you see your future as bright, uh, hopeful, that you could do anything? Um, I really did. Uh, my mom um, never got to go to school. Uh, she went two weeks to school in her life. And my dad went through sixth grade, and I knew from the first day that I went to school, which was the first day school was, was in session in the new school building, that they expected me to not only finish elementary school and high school, but they expected me to finish college too and they were able to provide that opportunity for you. They did, and my, my brother and my sister. When you do, you know, the math on the figures to see the government put in X amount of dollars, what benefits came out of that investment? Could you comment on, on the, the wider impact of that investment into this um, community? It'd be hard for me to to know how an accountant would deal with that, but a psychologist could write books from now on um, because well, that's not something you can put a dollar sign on.